Hello. Today, I'm going to speak, teach, and preach on the life of David. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Father, use me, O God, as a pipeline, as a vessel for your word, O Lord Jesus, Father. Speak your word, O God, O Father, and let the people not just have ears to hear, but hearts to do, O God, in the name of Jesus. Let them use David, O God, as an example, O Lord Jesus, to live their lives, O God, and help them, O Father, to continually, to continually walk on the straight and narrow path, in Jesus' mighty holy name. Amen and hallelujah. Amen. Now, David, he was a man of many talents. He was a musician. He was a great warrior. He was a great king. But first, he was, he was a child of God. Like we are children of God today. He was one that served God. And not just served God, but trusted in God in all his ways. He leaned not unto his own understanding, but in all that ways acknowledged God. And he directed, God directed David's path. Now, David, I feel his story can be relevant to many Christians today. Yes, we read his Psalms. Yes, we read the great acts that he did in 1st and 2nd Samuel and in, and in King and in Chronicles. But David was much more than that. He was the one that technically established the kingdom of Israel. He established Jerusalem as the capital. He did many things. He brought the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem and intended to build a temple but did not because the prophet said not to because his son would be the one, Solomon, which would build the temple. But David, he was a man that fully trusted and served God. Yes, he made mistakes, but his life is a life that we should aim to strive, trusting in God in every and all things. Let's take, for example, the story of Goliath. Goliath was a man that terrorized, he terrorized the, the people of Israel with his tall strength and might. And David refused the armor that Saul gave him. Why? Because David used God's strength, God's power, God's authority. And that's one of the big things that I feel like we today as Christians need to take into account is that we need to be putting on the armor of God, not using the fleshly things to counteract what Satan has against us. We need to put on the whole armor of God, not just the armor, not just the armor of this worldly flesh, not fighting the, the demons and devils and principalities and powers and rulers of darkness in this age, in the area over here. But we need to fight those through using the armor of God, the sword of the spirit, we need to fight them using the sword of the spirit. Remember that David, David could not take Goliath's head if it wasn't for God. David could not do it in his own might, in his own strength. He could only do it through, through God's power, God's might, and God's strength. I believe it also says in 1 Samuel 16, it talks about how Samuel came to Bethlehem and anointed and he sanctified Jesse and his sons and called them to sacrifice. How it says in verse 7 on the ASV version, it says, or verse 6, it says, It came to pass when they were come that he looked on Eliab, Eliab and said, Surely Jehovah's anointed is before him. But Jehovah said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For Jehovah seeth not as a man seeth, for the looketh on the man outward appearance, but Jehovah looketh on the heart. Then Jesse called Abedin, and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, Neither hath Jehovah chosen thee. This, verse 9 said, Then Jesse made Shema to pass by, and he said, Neither hath Jehovah chosen this. And Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Jehovah hath not chosen these. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are, are here all thy children? And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest, and behold, he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, And send, send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he hath come hither. And he has sent and brought in. Now he was ruddy and withal of a beautiful countenance and a goodly to look upon. And Jehovah said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. 
You see, and when Samuel anointed him, the presence, the spirit of God came upon David. Now, David, you can see here, I thought was, in my own interpretation, was a bit discriminated against. David, as if you can read between the lines, was seen, I'm sure, as the littlest and the most unliked by both the father and the, the eldest sons. Because Jesse chose all the other sons to pass before Samuel rather than David. But he left David tending the sheep. So let me show you why this is so important to the story. Because God, and how this relates to us Christians, because God sees the ones that no one cares for. God sees you. You who's in the corner still working every day behind the scenes. You who's continually doing the work of God's ministry. But there's no recognition. God sees you and God cares for you. God sees you and God cares for you. His mercy, his grace, his favor is upon you. Like the spirit of the Lord was upon David at that moment. God, grace, mercy and favor and his spirit also because the Holy Spirit is in you if you are a Christian. His grace, mercy, favor, love, joy, peace, they're all upon you. If you're walking on the straight and narrow path, doesn't matter what you're doing, where you're doing, as long as you're doing his will and his purpose. You could be a shepherd, you could be a manager of a big corporation, or you could just be the regular, the everyday person. But as long as you're walking in God's path, the straight and narrow path and doing God's will, he sees you. He knows you. He see, God sees everyone. But he sees you. He knows you. His grace, his mercy, his favor is upon you. David was cast aside by the world, by his father, by his brothers. But he was not cast away by God. You may be cast away by the world. You may be seen as someone lowly in the world's authority and position. But God sees you. He has called you, called you a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. He has lifted you up from the dirt. He has opened your eyes. You are no longer blind, being led by the blind. But you are now, your spiritual eyes are open and you can see the goodness that God has for your life. God is not the son of men that you should lie, nor the son of men that you should repent. If he said it as well, he will do it. What benefits a man to gain the whole world but lose his soul? Remember that everyone in the body of Christ has their purpose. Doesn't matter. Sometimes the muscles aren't seen, but they still do their purpose. You can't see the muscles on the outward appearance. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. You can't see the bones, for example, on the outward appearance of the human body. You cannot see your bones. You can feel their presence, but you cannot see them physically with your eye. You cannot see the, the white of the bone structure. But without the bones, it would be inessential to live. It's the same thing with the body of Christ. You may not be seen or heard by people in the world. Or even people in the body of Christ. But God sees you. God acknowledges your purpose. Just as we acknowledge the purpose of bones today. God acknowledges and sees you. For God does not look at the outward appearance. But God looks at the heart. Amen and hallelujah. Amen. Another aspect of David's life. In which you can look at. Is when he sinned with Bathsheba. Now I feel this is very much even more important. Than the story in which David slayed the giant because yes that shows the courageous and through God's spirit I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me but that just in which it says in Philippians 4 verse 13 but I feel like Bathsheba's story specifically shows that even as someone who did all these mighty things who took over Jerusalem and established it as the capital who put the Ark of the Covenant there who slayed giants who conquered many battles even him, David, who Jesus was to refer to as the son of David. David, that mighty man, which is considered in the both the Judaic and Christi Christianic religion as very, very important figure. Judaism has a symbol 
Their symbol is based around David Star. That is how important he is to both to, in both religions. Yet he is a man that still sinned. In the story of Bathsheba, he saw Bathsheba bathing on the rooftop and he lost over her. And her husband, who was off fighting, I believe it was the Ammonites, fighting the Ammonites. He sent Uriah, which was the husband of Bathsheba, to, ki- to be killed on the front lines without any support and any help. So that he could take Bathsheba in marriage all to himself. And I believe it's the prophet Nathan that gave him a story of what David did. And David repented. But the child that was produced as a result of this sin died or took the place of that sin. And what I find this dynamic very interesting I want to explain to you now is that we as Christians, sometimes we do fall short. We do fall out. Of the grace of God. Sometimes we do sin. But that grace. That Jesus paid on the cross. As long as we repent and do a 180 covers for us. That blood on the cross. David's son. That son that died. That blood was shed. In the same way that Jesus' blood was shed for us. So yes. As Christians. On this walk, we will make mistakes. That doesn't mean that we should make them purposely. David didn't try and continually make the same mistake over and over again. He didn't continually lust over women over and over again. But he did it one time and he did a 180 and turn, which is the same attitude and response we Christians need to have. We need to be able to recognize, one, that we sin. Two, that we've fallen short of the plan that God has for our lives. Three, to repent. And repentance, to, I always like to describe it as a 180 degree turn, which is a, which is a turn in the opposite direction. And to forward thanksgiving, to give thanks to God. And that's what David did. He gave thanks to God. He praised God. And so too was me give thanks to God and praise God that he is merciful and graceful and just and so, so good for for him to forgive us. Because how many times on this earth have people messed up? Even when you read in the Bible, people mess up over and over and over again. But God is faithful and just to forgive them of all their unrighteousness. Because God loves us unconditionally no matter what we can ever do god will still love you now it doesn't give you an excuse to sin but it gives you the grace if you fall that's one of the things that i heard from a message is that god his grace is not for you to purposely sin but to cover you if you fall It's not for you to purposely sin, not for you to purposely throw yourself off a cliff, but it's there to catch you if you fall. It's not there for you to purposely jump off, but it's there in case you slip off so he can catch you and so you don't fall. And so that's one of the big lessons I like from David. Is that the fact that he repented and praised the Lord, even though he lost something precious to him. That that blood that was shed is such a, is a representation of Jesus' blood being shed for us as a sacrifice. As a lamb that taken on the sin. Because it says for the wages of sin is death. So as Jesus died, died and his blood was shed, taken on the sins of the whole world. And th- as David's baby, also his blood was shed. Or her blood, his, the blood was shed. Taking on David's sin. For it says for the wages of sin is death in Romans. But now too, we can live eternal life. That bridge has, that has, was once destroyed in the garden of Adam and Eve. In the garden of Eden with Adam and Eve. Was now restored through the blood of Jesus Christ. Now we too, can, we too 
will not have eternal separation from God, which is spiritual death, which is one of the wages of sin. Because everyone dies naturally. But the wages of sin is death in the context of death is a spiritual death in which is eternal separation from God. But now we no longer have to have that eternal separation from God. Because Jesus is that lamb. That lamb that has no sin. The lamb that has known no sin. He is that lamb that takes upon that punishment for us. And so if you would like to accept this gift, that Jesus has given you is free. No cost attached. All you need to do is repeat this prayer. And just repeat this prayer after me now. If you just feel touching on your heart and you say, I want to accept Jesus in my life as my Lord and Savior. Just repeat this prayer after me now. Say with me now. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I repent of my sins. Lord Jesus, forgive me. And I receive you now as my Lord and my Savior from this day forward. In Jesus' mighty holy name, amen and hallelujah, amen. You're that one lost sheep that's not been found. The one lost coin that's not been found. Your name is written to the last book of life, amen and hallelujah, amen. I recommend you reading the book of John. It's such an amazing book for newborn again believers. I didn't have enough, too much time to go in depth into the life of King David and how that correlates to us as Christians. But those were two key parts of his life which i feel can relate to us as christians especially in this day and age the part of which he sinned and the part in which he was called and anointed for his purpose in summary of both of those points the first point in which the world may not see you even people in the body of christ may not see you but god sees you and he has called you for a great purpose A purpose and a plan for your life. He knew you before you even formed in the womb. He knew you before you even formed the womb. It says that in Jeremiah. So, he has a plan and purpose for your life. All you need to do is find out that plan and purpose and live that plan and purpose to to the fullest, living on the straight and narrow path, and God will do the rest. Two, that even though we sin, He is faithful and just to forgive us of all unrighteousness. That is not for us to fall off the cliff purposely, but for us to catch, but his grace is there to catch us if we fall, if we slip and fall. And that, how that represents, how the baby dying is a representation of Jesus dying, yet resurrecting on the cross for us. So if you just take anything out of this message today, is that, yes, we may sin, but Jesus' blood covers us. And two, that you are called for a purpose. You are called for a purpose in Jesus Christ. God has a plan for your life. No matter who and what sees it, you have been called by God. For you are a chosen generation and a royal priesthood. This has been the life of King David. Thank you for listening. Like, share, comment and subscribe. It really helps with the, um, with the amount of views that we get so we can reach even more people to this message. And they too may receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And have a blessed week.